we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no, hey, no. Fucking rat anyway, so family's all rats. rats. Would have brought to be a rat. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna dig the fucking thing. You're gonna dig the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna do it. I'll dig the fucking hole. I don't give a fuck. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ, Mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some Disney coffee around here someplace. Do you any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Are you to give them hope? What do you give them? We give them happiness. How's it going, everyone? It's Bob with Cinephilas. This is episode 130, and in this episode, I interview Tyron Manning. I talk about her new movie. I talk about my favorite projects of her, including her music and everything around those lines. Sit back, have a listen, and please enjoy. Hi, Bob. Hey, Tyron. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you this morning? Hi. You know, I'm digging it, digging it. It's nice and sunny in Chicago, so I, 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 it's a little colder oh. outside, but at least it's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Chicago. First off, I have to start off saying uh, I'm a big fan. Actually, I have both Boomcat albums. So when the opportunity came mm-hmm. up to interview you, I got all excited because yeah, that and I even oh, listened to Butch Life um, a couple days ago. It's, you got one of the best voices out there for it. I like the not alternative pop, but it's definitely its own genre. So I'm a big fan. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me that you um, that you listen to Boomcat. That means so much to me. Yeah, it, um, I like I said, when I found out uh, I was going to be able to have an opportunity to talk to you, I was like, oh, my gosh, I actually get to see, you know, like, it's just funny because I listened to it with my sister when we were younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was quite some time ago, but, yeah. We still, yeah, but, you, uh, know, you know, you never know. That third album might come at some point that's going to shock the world, you know, in a, in a world that has very little original music nowadays. Aw, you're so sweet. It's so funny you say that because my brother and I, um, we got together, we got together recently and Kellen's been, man, my brother, by the way, he's never stopped uh, writing and, and what he's doing now is just, I mean, it's amazing. So he's, you know, he's finally, he's ready and that's all I needed was for Kellen to get back ready. So I'm like, ready, Kellen? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, Glitch Life had such a cool feel to it. Like, that's one of those things you could just put on and just drive with. You know what I mean? Yeah. That one I did on my own. That that um, Some of the more dance kind of EDM stuff I did with um, separate producers. So that was one of them. Uh, Kellen and I do, you know, a lot more of the, like, kind of trip-hop and very melancholy. I mean, what Kellen's doing now is, I don't know, it's just next level but yeah, some of the dance stuff I, d- I do with other producers, but I love Good Life. That one, um, that one did well too. Yeah, I, I stumbled across it and I was like, oh man, you know, like it was just hitting real hard. I was like, okay, you know. Okay, okay, <laughs> but here we gotta, uh, we gotta talk about every last one of them. Uh, oh yeah. I, I got the opportunity to watch it. I really dug it. Um, I kind of like the, uh, how can I put it? It's a tragic story, you know what I mean? But it's got some hard-hitting action and all that, and obviously your character is very, you know, big in this. You get to start with Richard Dreyfuss, Jake Weber, Michael Madsen. How was how was life on the set for the bit, and what called to you for uh, this movie? What did the script yell to you for? Um, so I, you know, I live out in the desert, Palm Springs now, and um, I was working out with my trainer at his uh, private gym, and he was he's newer in my life as well, and um. He was just telling me that his friend that he grew up with um, was a director, and he said that he had a script that his friend called him and said, hey, do you think Karen would ever read a script? And so he was really embarrassed to ask me. But I was like, of course, I love reading stuff, you know. I always love to read good material. So I read it, and then I met Kristen. And um, Kristen's amazing. 
um, he, he had had another film coming out. I saw that, saw his work on that. And I love the role that he offered me it just was different than normal stuff I'm offered. And I, I heard how the cast was rounding out and I was like, you know, yeah, you know, um, able to film it out here. So and it was really just right around, um, you know, it was like right when we were allowed to start filming again during the pandemic. So it had a lot of special, a lot of special meanings, um, in that way too, just, you know, a group of people coming together in, in a hard time and for the art and, and, you know, as an actor and it's always nice to get to actor or musician. It's always nice to get to like, you know, get, get that out of your system. So it's just a good fit. No, absolutely. And like I said, you have a pretty decent role in it. You know, um, a lot of story revolves around everyone else too. Um, now, how cool is it to work with, like, a Michael Madsen who's just been around in everything and, and of course, Richard Dreyfuss being a Hollywood powerhouse? Right. So, man, well, I worked a little bit more with Richard than I did with Michael. Um, I actually only met him briefly. Sometimes we don't cross paths when we're not in the same scenes. But um, Richard was – I mean, that was uh, – you know, when he showed up to set, you know, he's quite a force and he's – you know, it's one of these people that has so many tales, um, just, you know, in the business and loves to talk about his stories and they're all compelling. So we're just sitting around like pillow talk, you know, just listening to him, <laughs> keep going and going and just teaching all the wisdom and everything. And he, he had a blast. You could tell he was just having a really good time. And, and then, you know, on action, he's serious. I mean, he's the real deal. And, and then it's almost like working with um, Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's just when you know when you're around like a great someone that's been doing this and that Genesee Qua, that thing that they have that you know you see it you, you around it and you're like, oh yeah, I'm in the scene with them. I need to make sure I'm not watching them. This isn't the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. So difficult. <laughs> it was. Um, it, it can be, but I mean. I'm sort of making a joke of that, but sometimes you're just like, wow, like, look at them go, you know, and you're just sitting there just soaking it all in and just so feeling so privileged to be around that. Yeah, there were a couple times in the movie, uh, especially with uh, Richard grabbing a gun and shooting, I was like, and Richard Dreyfuss has a gun. I didn't know that was <laughs> even possible to happen, you know. Mr. Right. Holland Dunn's got, a, Dunn's got a shotgun and it's over now, you know. Yeah, and, and also, like, when he gets going, um, like, when he – um. You know, and he, like, there's that one scene where, well, he's the one that does the tagline, every last one of them. And, you know, he's a, he's authoritative, you know, and, and he's like, excuse me, everybody, quiet. And we're like, oh, of course. So he can just, you know, get, get it out. Everyone was already quiet, but it's just like, <laughs> you know, you, you need to make sure you can hear a pin drop and just, you know, I love these actors that have worked in the theater. You know, you can really tell that the force and, the, you know, pulling the, the voice out of the diaphragm, perhaps he, could, he probably is a singer. Um, but, yeah, just, just that commanding, that presence is very inspiring to be around. And also um, another funny thing is, is this is a second movie of yours that I've screened. I also screened uh, Last Call. Not that long ago. Oh, oh, cool! What would you think? I really dug it. Um, you know, Jeremy Piven is. It's interesting to see him in a serious role, but yeah. um, I have to say, you were my favorite part of it because, you know, we all have that girl that uh, we knew way back when we were kids, and you know, you see how you grow up and all that. Especially if you go away from from the hometown for a while, you come back and you reconnect. It was kind of funny because you pulled that off seamlessly, like. You have this uh, familiarity about you where everyone watching sort of feels like they knew you or knew someone like you throughout the entire movie. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I love that part of it, too. Just that, you know, it's kind of like when we all go back home for Thanksgiving or Christmas or something and we see our friends from growing up. And, you know, I don't know if they always had a thing for each other growing up, but, you know, when you see somebody after so long, sometimes that feeling, you're like, oh, you know, so people say, after my first wife, second wife, I married my high school sweetheart. You're like, <laughs> how did that happen? You know, and you just imagine that they ran into each other or something after all those years and 
they just still had that that thing, you know, that that thing that they never explored back then. Yeah, it's fu- it's funny. Um, I actually ended up marrying a little girl who grew up across the street from me, so I've known her since <laughs> she was five years old. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so precious. Is that There's was that your your first uh, well, love, or did you? It it was. Um, I'm four years older than her, and I'm friends with her older siblings, and. Just uh, one time I had to rehab my knee. I'd had two knee surgeries, and they were like, just go for walks. So I kept walking, and then she started coming along for the walks, and 16 years later, two kids, all that, just oh, kind of cool stuff happens like that. I love that. See what I mean? There's, yes. That movie's right up your alley then. Oh, yeah. And then there's one thing. So, like I said, my sister's quite a bit younger than me, and um, so when I said, oh, yeah, I'm getting to talk to Tyra Manning, she immediately went, did she have to learn how to moonwalk? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is her favorite thing. And she goes, I I, she goes, ask her if you have a moment. I hope it doesn't come up. She's like, but that's my favorite scene in the entire movie is her moonwalking when pregnant. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you that you she'll, she'll, she'll be 30. And just the fact that she still remembers this. I um, love that. So, and that's so what happened. Like, I was just walking along, you know. I think I was hyper, you know, especially when I was younger. Like, I have so much energy to burn. I'm, like, stuck in this belly, and I'm, like, i got to do something that's fun right now. And I just started moonwalking. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally just me just acting a fool like that. I thought I mean, she'd be like, God, Taryn, easy. Don't be <laughs> ruining my frame. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just liked it. Well, Taryn, it was such a pleasure. Well, time flies when you're having fun. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Good luck with this movie. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, Boomcat comes out with some more, and when you come to Chicago, we'll have to come see you. Yes, tell your wife and your um, your sister I said hello. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on the movie. Thank you, sweetie. (laughs) Have a good day. There you have it, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the interview as much as I did. Um, Remember, her new movie, Every Last One of Them, is streaming now. Give it a run. It's pretty good. You guys have a good one. And as Logan always says, cheers.